Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go over the portfolio and go over my top earners for this month so far. Getting right into it, you can see that the portfolio is doing 7.81% overall and about 4.74% in the month view. The main contributors to this overall growth so far is going to be my consumer retail pie. Now my consumer retail pie is producing about 11.99% growth and within that sub pie the main driver is Target producing about 27.98% growth. For the month I'm looking at my US agricultural strategy sub pie producing about 7.10% for the month. Now within that US agricultural sub pie, I'm looking at American Vanguard Corporation producing about 14.56%. Now keep in mind that those are my top growth stocks and that other stocks or other groups in my portfolio have different funding amounts. So they're not gonna always reflect uh, the same amount of actual equity being grown. And I contribute a lot more to my REIT sub pie and that's why it's producing me a lot more. It's actually a bulk of my um, overall earnings. And I'm looking at about uh, $150 at about 6% growth for that particular sub pie. Within the month, the REIT sub pie has produced about $125 at about 4.75% growth. And since we're talking about the REIT sub pie, my best performer for this month is Apple Hospitality Read at $10.20. Now that should be no surprise to you because it is my largest holding of this portfolio. Overall, I'm looking at $11.69 of total dividend payout so far. So I'm at the point where I'm considering adding a new holding to this portfolio and I've kind of been thinking it over and considering three different companies that I wanted to add for this particular phase in the portfolio. I've been considering going in a new direction with the portfolio. I wanna expand out and I wanna diversify. First off is 3M. Now I've talked a little bit about them before and I still think they're a solid company to add to this portfolio. AT&T, which is a great dividend stock to own and it's only getting better. And Iron Mountain, which has surprisingly taken a new route into some of the things that they offer, which is a new debt service that they want to roll out. So I'm, I'm still considering them and different things and what they can bring to this portfolio. But ultimately, in the end, I decided to go with AT&T. Now, AT&T has a, a long-term dividend-paying history, and they're expanding out their portfolio. They're actually looking to become more of a stream service or entertainment company, which is surprising because they've been a long-term provider for actual communications. So when considering them, I'm actually looking at them from the point of view of an entertainment company now. Now many times AT&T CEO Randall Stevenson has talked about wanting to actually be more of a competitor for services like Netflix and Amazon versus actual Verizon. So I don't think their focus anymore is really, if it ever was, but I don't think their focus is really with the telecommunications. I don't think they're trying to be a very competitive phone company, but instead an entertainment company that offers other services. Now, AT&T has obtained Time Warner. Now, Time Warner provides AT&T with HBO and Time Warner Broadcasting System. Time Warner Broadcasting System provides AT&T with companies like CNN, Warner Brothers Studios, and a number of other television channels. Now keep in mind that that acquisition was about $85.4 billion, which shows how serious they are about moving their company into the entertainment business. And then came along Elliott Management. Now Elliott Management is a hedge fund that has assets under management of about $38 billion. They took $3.2 billion to get about a little over 1% of AT&T. Now uh, Elliott Management is led by Paul Singer, and Paul Singer is looking to make changes to AT&T. They don't understand why they want to go into the entertainment business, and they're looking to actually cut away at their Time Warner holding in order to make AT&T more profitable. Now keep in mind, the purchase of Time Warner by AT&T is to expand out HBO Max. Now They have HBO Go and they have HBO Now, but HBO Max is another service. HBO Max is supposed to compete with other streaming services like Netflix and soon to be Disney and soon to be 
Apple TV. Now with all these services running around like HBO Max, HBO Now, and HBO Go, what are the main differences? And the main difference is that HBO Max is supposed to be similar to HBO Now, which is a standalone streaming service, unlike HBO Go, which requires a cable provider. And so with that monthly subscription that you're gonna get with HBO Max, you're supposed to get under one umbrella all the products of HBO that we know now, all the products of Time Warner, which is gonna be CNN, TBS, Cartoon Network, and many others. But it's also gonna offer TV shows just like Netflix. However, AT&T and Elliott Management don't agree on this opinion. Now, Elliott Management, under the leadership of Paul Singer, expressed that they don't want AT&T to be going in this direction. They want to keep them a telecommunications company and less of a Hollywood type of company. Now, with the 1% that Elliott Management owns in AT&T, is that enough to actually give them authority on some of the bigger decisions when it comes to voting? I don't know. I, I would say that it doesn't give them much authority in this say, but it does get them in the boardroom so they can lobby other board members in order to enact some of the changes that they want. Now let's face it, if Elliott Management can show that how profitable AT&T can be, which means more money in the shareholders' pockets, the majority of shareholders are probably going to vote in the direction in which Elliott Management suggests. And so shortly after Elliott Management's involvement in AT&T, at and stock rose about 1.5% or more. Now, Elliott Management has asked at and to do a few simple things like increase their dividends and share buybacks, to stop striking new acquisitions, and to overall improve efficiency. Now, it's no secret that at and has a net debt of $149 billion, which is why I'm sure Elliott Management advised at and to sell DirecTV. Now, DirecTV is something that AT&T obtained in 2015 for around $50 billion. In the past 12 months, AT&T has lost over 1.5 million subscribers. So now let's actually put AT&T within this. Okay, so I want to go into one of my sub pies here which is going to be my entertainment. Actually, no, no. It's going to be my communication sub pie, which I'm actually going to rename. Now, this is the communication pie that I built. I'm looking to actually add this as a sub pie to the main portfolio. And I'm just going to make a few changes here. So I want to make this the communication and entertainment sub pie because I'm looking to actually kind of encompass what AT&T is going to be, what they are and what they're going to be, and other um, holdings that I want to add to this, like Disney, at, when the portfolio is actually ready for it. I'm also going to um, change the percentage here and increase Verizon's hold. As you know, they've increased their dividend um, as of late, and so I want to start getting in on some of that increased dividend. I'm looking to just decrease this um, Comcast holding. So I'm gonna save that. Okay, and I'm gonna add this to the portfolio. Now I want to take this to 10%. Gonna lower my REIT accordingly. Okay, and we're good to go. So now we've added um, the Verizon and AT&T and Comcast to the main pie through this sub pie of the communications and entertainment sub pie. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and save, confirm. And it's done. So I've added the communication slash entertainment pie as a 10% hold in my main portfolio. Now within that sub pie is going to be, uh, the main ones are going to be Verizon, Comcast, and AT&T. This sub pie has AT&T at about 65% of its overall makeup. And now I'm looking to see if how I'm going to expand that. Like I said before, I might introduce Disney into this portfolio. Uh, not at this point, but at some point, I definitely want to add them. 
So just some of my thoughts and opinions about AT&T being incorporated in this portfolio. So despite their debts, I still think AT&T is a very profitable company. They have a good balance sheet, they have a lot of goods and services that make them profitable, and they're a strong dividend provider. They've been increasing their dividend, and they've been offering a dividend for over 25 years. So I'm not really worried about them. I think they're going to be a strong company regardless of what Elliott Management does. Now, Elliott Management, I'm not really sure if they're here to help or to hurt AT&T. They have holdings in Amazon, in 20th Century Fox, and in Comcast within the last five years. And I think they might be looking to carve out some goods and services, some of the entertainment packages, some of the channels that AT&T has obtained through Time Warner, and they might want to offer them up to some of these other companies that I mentioned, especially DirecTV. Maybe they want to get uh, AT&T to sell that and they can be a part of the deal and make money through that part and also make money when their stock goes up for, I don't know, a company like um, Comcast they pick up their subscribers so something like that could really make a difference in terms of um, how profitable or how much you know extra cash at t is going to be carrying around and how these other companies are going to affect them so uh, regardless I think that Elliott management is going to do it so that they turn out profit it's just is it in the best interest of at t so we'll see we won't know time will tell and we won't know how much influence they'll actually have on the board at AT&T until they start to make some stronger and stronger suggestions. And then eventually they just might, you know, they might leave and do nothing. And that's okay. But regardless of their involvement, I'm not making this acquisition because of them. I think it's great that AT&T is going in a direction uh, for entertainment. It seems like a lot of the big companies are going in that way, and why not AT&T? Now keep in mind, AT&T was one of the first companies that came up with programming languages. So they've always been kind of looking around the corner to kind of innovate and be a leading company. And entertainment, if they think that's the, the route to go, I'm pretty sure it is. So I just want to give a special thanks to Luke Robinson for being my 10th subscriber. Now you've helped me reach over from single digits to double digits, so I thank you for that. I thank all the subscribers before him and those to come after him. I really appreciate you guys. You really help out the channel. Okay guys, that's going to be it for me. So if you enjoyed the content, please give it a like. Leave some comments down below if you want to get a conversation going. And subscribe to the channel. It really helps out. With that being said, until next time.